What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hey. We were supposed to have Carrie today, but her internet decided to take a shit uh, right before we started recording. Uh, but it's Dense Pixels, so you never know. You never know who could pop up midway through the podcast and, and surprise you. So maybe we'll get her back if her internet turns yeah, back Maybe up. we'll get a run-in from Carrie. It is, it is truly a run-in. <laughs> We should just call it that from now on. That would make way more sense. Um, she was supposed to talk about the Monster Hunter Rise demo uh, that released, I think, today or yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mikey, you'll be shocked to learn that massive uh, Nintendo Direct uh, that we were expecting to see yesterday uh, just never materialized. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. I'm as surprised <laughs> as you. <laughs> Um, there was a very small Nintendo Direct, mostly focused around Monster Hunter, but uh, yeah, nothing. Uh, no, uh, no Metroid Four, no Switch Pro, no PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X games coming to Switch through the cloud. Man, anything like uh, that? Yeah, I, I'm I'm shocked that a uh, a typo riddled piece of paper that just has the nintendo racetrack on it so it must be real <laughs> uh was completely wrong see this is how you know it wasn't real it didn't have the nintendo seal of quality on. that's true they should have put that on there I'm, I'm sure they have that seal of approval on every internal memo they could search <laughs> just to authenticate it and because uh, and because because as we all know the nintendo seal of quality is limited there's only so many memos they're allowed to send out per year <laughs> Otherwise, they won't be authorized to hit the Nintendo email servers internally. Oh, man. People are wild, man. I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> um, so we can get right into the meager uh, amount of new releases that are coming out this week. Uh, but one notable one that I'm pleasantly excited about. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Core Collection. That's that's what, not the one. Well, I was about to uh, say, what a weird game to be excited about. <laughs> comes to PlayStation, <laughs> Xbox, and Switch. Uh, MXGP 2020 comes to PS5 uh, later this week, and then on Friday or Thursday, actually, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World: The Game Complete Edition comes to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, Stadia, and PC. Scott Pilgrim versus the World is a very good uh, side-scrolling beat 'em up that came out round about the time that the movie came out a decade ago. And it has been available for a long time because the licensing for the game uh, has been, has ceased to exist. So you haven't been able to re-download it. Uh, I don't even think on PS4 at any point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, Ubisoft picked this up. It's coming out. Uh, I don't have any confirmation. The, the best thing about the Scott Pilgrim game uh, was the soundtrack for that game yeah it was yeah. really 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 good um because it was done by I, I can never pronounce this anamanaguchi i think is the name of the man who does like a lot of chiptunes um stuff which is which is excellent uh so i'm on the ubisoft website right now because i'm trying to see if they got the original score uh for this game because if they didn't then it's going to be a whole lot harder to recommend it <laughs> <laughs> i gotta be honest like it like the, the score is hugely important to this game um otherwise it's honestly it's just a you know it's a pretty standard beat em up right a, a difficult one too like it's a hard ass game yeah it's a quarter muncher beat em up which... yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh the the listing on ubisoft's website makes no mention of the soundtrack which is concerning concerning uh let me yeah I, I'm, I'm very curious about this again if if it's if the, if the soundtrack's in the game uh well worth getting uh i would also tell you that if they put the soundtrack on spotify okay wait no yeah it doesn't fucking say god damn it they just announced this like four days ago and there's like no no word of the soundtrack at all super, super yeah cool. that doesn't uh that doesn't bode well Either that or Ubisoft just does not understand why people. Well, but now it's saying it comes with the CD soundtrack. Like I'm looking at the at the Twitter 
Yeah, okay, yeah, it, it is confirmed that the Anamanaguchi soundtracks in the game. Okay, definitely recommend getting Scott Pilgrim vs. the World <laughs> um, when that releases. That if you haven't played it, it's very good. Um, it's a difficult game. I think Terrence would like it. I mean, he likes. Uh, I don't know if he played it back when it came out or not. But... No, um, because it's a bunch of white people, and Terrence hates white people. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Fair. I don't think Ter- I don't know if Terrence would appreciate that music. Um, I know he's a big. He's a music guy. And he's into like, like the Streets of Rage soundtrack, but that also sounds like '80s house music. So, yeah. you know, I get it, that. So yeah, that's that's he likes that stuff. So speaking of hating white folks, what a great transition <laughs> into the into the housekeeping ad copy for this week. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll get to what Brad is talking about in a minute, but mm-hmm. uh, first and foremost, you can go to YouTube.com/slash Dense Pixels and subscribe uh you can see brad and i uh in our nerdy offices mm-hmm. um what we are green and orange what what are, what team is green and orange the the hurricane the u unfortunately is the first yeah hurricanes. <laughs> that, that all right mind. never mind never which, mind which is unfortunate bad analogy it is the right shade of green and orange too like it's <laughs> it is green <laughs> If only you could have gone with teal. We could have at least like try like co-opted the the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, damn it, Doctor Doom! If you only had a teal tunic instead of a green one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, I, I never put that together, but that makes total sense as to why yeah, you chose that shade of green for your that, office. That green, and then my my gray my gray three other gray walls. That is why. That's the motif I'm going for. I did. I did not choose that. Well, I, I we did choose this color when we moved into the house, but this was my son's room originally, uh, ah. and we picked orange because my wife's favorite color is orange, and I also like orange as well. Uh, but now that it's my office, I kind of wish it was a different color. <laughs> but I also don't feel like repainting it, so we're gonna uh, yeah, live look, with the orange. So <laughs> look, don't get me started about painting. I hate it. Uh, subscribe to all the TMP Studios podcasts wherever you get your podcasts, uh, including the Nerd Apocalypse, uh, Black on Black Cinema, Coming Distractions, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Uh, for go to densepixels.com slash premium and for $5 a month or $50 a year you get access to the premium slate of podcasts including the airing of grievances no time to bleed the men with the golden tongues upstage conversation and the full episode of the look forward political podcast now look you got uh, you got you got a, a, a trio of uh, Jay Andy and Brad uh, on this week and it's a doozy uh, it is uh, it is uh, and uh, three hours and it's normally around two hours and kind of at the halfway point uh, they kind of they kind of as Kramer said when he when he was was numb they let the expletive fly <laughs> but um, you know it, it, it they but it's not the halfway point that is the, the the line of demarcation it is the one hour mark that is the line of demarcation so you get two solid hours of three political degenerates just acting the fool. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a rabbit season joke in there that is just, just terrible. But, uh, and, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, we were, we, we were really shitty this week. <laughs> Jay, Jay, Jay tried in vain to turn over a new leaf this year. New year, new Jay. That lasted all of 10 days. Didn't even last a fortnight. No. Barely, all, barely, barely a Scaramucci, honestly. <laughs> like if, if we're, since, we're, since, we're, since we're talking politics. Barely a Scaramucci before Jay reverted to his, uh, his, his former ways. So yeah, well worth the five dollars this week also uh if anyone's listening uh and you're curious about um uh listening on the go uh please do not use the pod bean app for L- unless, unless you're gonna unless you're gonna buy some magic beans yeah they're trying to hustle you man that's not us uh pod bean is trying to is trying to hustle some beans out of you and um uh so go to the website and and uh log in through there uh using a browser and then i think you can download it onto your phone that way mm-hmm. 
It's a little more. It's a little inconvenient, but it's Podbean's fault. So. Or you can listen to it straight through the browser as well. You can yeah, just, just listen to right it through the browser. browser. But yeah, unfortunately, that's we're 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 trying to figure out if there's a way around this, but uh, it doesn't seem like that Podbean is cooperating, which really stinks because yeah. it makes it makes it really inconvenient for you guys. Um, the big news today is that a new game was teased uh, that set the the internet aflutter. Uh, Machine Games, developer of the most recent Wolfenstein games, uh, critically acclaimed, uh, are going to be developing a brand new Indiana Jones video game. And it's being executive produced by Todd Howard. So, again, a a very successful franchise about uh, ruthlessly murdering Nazis. And Machine Games' follow-up is going to be another franchise about ruthlessly murdering Nazis while trying to find treasure. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's about a teacher ruthlessly yeah. murdering Nazis. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's not forget, Doctor Jones is a is a, is an educator. Yep, uh, he is he is the reason that people decide that they want to go into teaching uh, because old things belong into a museum. And because you can ride on top of tanks and punch Nazis. Um, here's, here's my question for him. Like, you're because you are correct. He is a professor. Um, but when he goes on, like, excursions, like, it's not like he's going relic hunting over the weekend. Like, he goes for, like, days and weeks at a time. Like, what does the university think about all this? Well, I'm sure that uh, he's tenured at this point. Sure. And oh, so he can't be fired for anything. He can't be fired. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Fire me? <laughs> I, I'm over here opening the Ark of the Covenant. I'm bringing, I'm bringing, I'm changing history, and you got me. Nah, nah, he's he's fine. He's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to see what type of game this is. Oh, come I mean, on. It's going to be. Come I, I have on. a feeling you're, you're, you're going to get like as as I said the uh, on in the fan group densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, the circle of inspiration <laughs> is about to be closed off. <laughs> Because if you don't think that this game is going to be a shameless uh, version of like an Uncharted or a Tomb Raider, you 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 got another thing coming. I mean, I you know I have no problem with that. Oh, I, it's, I fi- it. it's I fine by me. Games. Yeah, I got no problem with that either. But uh, um, I guess it seems like the logical thing to do. Sure. Um, I just I, I I'm I'm curious about like what's it gonna look like, right? Like mm-hmm. who's gonna Who's gonna Who's gonna voice him? Right? Is it gonna well, be that, one? Well, that's one the big one because in previous in previous Indiana Jones games, um, not that there's been many of them, but in previous games and specifically the ones the the last ones that came out came out I believe for PS3, 360, and Wii, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. um, they did use Harrison Ford's uh, likeness in those games. Huh. Uh, it wasn't voiced by him, if there was even voice in the game, um, but it did use his likeness. Uh, so I don't, I can't imagine that you're going to use like like I don't I don't think an Avengers situation would be smart here. I also don't think Harrison Ford is going to be voicing Indiana Jones in this game, nor would I want him to. No, no, because that would be because he's like 81, and and <laughs> also gives no shits. So, <laughs> so I don't need that. Um, but yeah, this is this is cool. Um, there's a lot, Micah. This is going to pain you. Um, I, I found out today that there's a lot of younger people, and by younger, I mean like in their 20s, uh, in the games industry who have seen the National Treasure movies, the Indiana Jones of their, of their era, one could say, but they've not actually seen any of the Indiana Jones films proper. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> as much as I have a uh, as much as I have a soft spot for those National Treasure movies, as do I, as a fan of both history and Nicolas Cage. Yes, um, uh, you gotta watch. Yeah, I mean, look, this might be blasphemy. If you're gonna watch one Indiana Jones, you gotta watch uh, the Last Crusade. The no, that's not blasphemy. That's that is correct. The third one is the best one. The best one. Um. Like I watch it every year on Father's Day by myself because uh, my dad isn't really into Indiana Jones. But now you have a son who might be. But now I have a son. Day. Yeah. And um, and we can have a bunch of awkward conversations about how 
uh, Henry Jones and Henry Jones Jr. are Eskimo brothers. (laughs) 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 Isn't Uh, that Eskimo cousins? Uh, is it Eskimo cousins? I think it's I don't Eskimo know. cousins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or 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 as or as Scrubs uh, coined it, uh, Wiener cousins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah. No, Last Crusade is the best one, and that's not that's not a controversial thing. Okay, I know some people are real hardcore into that first one, and for some dumb reason, Mm -hmm. idiots and bigots love that second movie, especially those married to Indian people. (laughs) I have no idea why you would like that movie, particularly if you have Indian people in your family. It doesn't really do well for them. But uh, look, I'm not. I'm not going to act like. Temple of Doom is a great film, but it's a fun movie to watch. It's all right. It has problems, let's say. Yeah, it has problems. I mean, outside of like, look, I get it, right? Yeah. I just moved, I just watched a movie with Jesse the Body Ventura called some, Somebody Something That Rhymes With Maggot. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> that movie is fine in terms of, you know, but, but uh, it's just not, it doesn't compare to the oh, first or oh, the no. third. No, and then don't and obviously and then the don't others don't count. Too. Yeah, don't those count. don't count. Mutt Williams. All right, all right. I remember seeing that in the theater. Yeah, I watched and and at the at the end, you remember the end of it where India's getting married and uh, they open the door to the chapel and a gust of wind blows Indiana Jones's hat off. I don't know why he had his hat on when he was getting married. Well, I think he put it on after the I do's. And um, they walked out. And they look at the hat. And you see Shia LaBeouf, and he's reaching for the hat, and you literally heard the entire theater go, no! (laughs) And then when Indiana Jones picks the hat back up and puts it on, and he says something like, oh, not today, kid. You know, everybody was like, whoo! (laughs) Oh, God, I miss theaters. Oh, so looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's hope that... uh, the bugs that uh, were in the last movie, the uh, the fire ants, are the only bugs that we have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, Nintendo also had a small uh, Nintendo Direct today uh, where they showed off Super Mario 3D World, which is soon coming for the Nintendo Switch. Of course, originally released on the Wii U where nobody played it, and yet considered one of the best super mario games of all time so it could be interesting uh they also showed off some of the new uh features of the add-on which is called bowser's fury uh which according to nintendo uh, is a game where bowser has become gargantuan and lost all control in bowser's fury mario and friends will team up with bowser jr to quell the bigger bowser's fury in an all-new adventure uh, I'm probably going to get this because I have never played Super Mario 3D World because I did not waste money on a Nintendo Wii U. <laughs> so I would like to play this. I, I, I love them. I like a Mario game. Big fan. Mario Odyssey, of course. Uh, Dead Pixels game of the year back in 2017. Yeah. So yeah. Who, who doesn't love a Mario game? They are the uh, they are the platformers that platformers aspire to be. And, and plus, uh, if if the scuttlebutt rumors on the internet are true. Uh, I'll have a solid month to play it until uh, another game comes out in the spring that we're both looking forward to, allegedly. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that would really uh, that would really cap off my uh, my first quarter of 2021. Um, but uh, more than that, well, yeah. All right, look, I, I'm looking at this video and I understand that Mario has a history of cosplaying as furries. Yes, but. The cat Mario Mm -hmm. may be the most disturbing. Um, Seeing Mario run on all fours Mm -hmm. like a cat is off-putting to me for some reason. I just, it doesn't, doesn't hit the eye the way I think it should. I understand that. It is a little weird. Yeah. Especially because most, most of the other Mario animal suits He's at least like still. Yeah, he's upright. A he's dude, just, right? Yeah, he's just a dude who has a thing for like tanukis, right? Like, 
Uh, well, no, the tanuki, the tanuki suit was a full was a full suit. Oh, I, look! I'll even give you that. I'll give you the whole bodysuit. I just don't like the the wow, the the running like a cat <laughs> all fours. Like that's just weird to me. But I'll let you know if it's weird or not when I when I play this game. I think it comes out February 11th, so only a couple weeks away. Excellent. Uh, awesome games done quick. It was last weekend. We talked about it on the show. Uh, they racked up 2.7 million dollars uh, raised for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, apparently, there's like a really cool uh, Diablo 3 speed run uh, that I have bookmarked that I haven't watched yet. Uh, that was pretty That was pretty fun uh, from all I understand. Somebody beat Celeste uh, in 14 minutes, 41 seconds using a DDR dance pad, which I can't even fathom playing <laughs> Celeste with that, uh, much less beating Celeste with that, and much less beating it, uh, speed running it. Which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> I'll see. Halo 3 was demolished in an hour, 15 minutes, uh, which seems quick for Halo 3. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. A couple other speed runs. Um, someone beat uh, all of Beat Saber on Expert Plus difficulty in one hour, 11 minutes, 59 seconds. Considering how Beat Saber's played, that feels tiring to me yeah yeah because you see this person like literally just standing up and 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 getting down so but, yeah uh, if you go to the awesome games done quick youtube channel uh all of the speed runs are on there so you can check them all out i'm seeing if there's anything uh any other notable ones on here the demolition man video game <laughs> for super nintendo wow. in 13 minutes why wow. do you even bother uh skyward sword in a minute 26 like i said i've, I've as i've said before on the show i've i've am fascinated by speed running um just the figuring out how to do it and you know finding finding these bugs and finding these glitches and or just figuring out how to beat a game fast um is kind of wild to me yeah man like because usually you have to have like things moving on all cylinders right right like, I, i'm i'm especially uh i love watching platformers being done that way mm -hmm. because it's you know you have to it, it, it's precision jumping man and precision movement and it's a marvel to see um yeah like fi final fantasy 7 beaten in an hour 56 minutes how how you know? like I don't even under I don't, <laughs> I don't even understand that. Uh, it, ta it takes like fifteen minutes to to switch discs, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what else we got here? Mario sixty four in thirty nine minutes blindfolded, <laughs> which is just, blindfolded. Yeah. Again, for for your uh, some of these people, are some of these people are lying. <laughs> Come on, <man. laughs> I mean, there's video of it. You can watch it for yourself. Nah, yo, you nah, to? nah, nah. I need to be in the room with you when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes in an hour 22, Micah. See, I would watch that. Yeah. The, that must be like... like the, mur the murder run. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, because there's like, there's like three hours of cutscenes and like... Oh, you're probably, jam you're probably jamming that yeah. up. Skip button. <laughs> I'd have to imagine during the cutscenes to make that happen. <laughs> So yeah, a lot, a lot of, lot of shit on here, a lot of shit. So like I said, awesome games on Quick YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to scroll the list to see what, uh, what ones might be available that you would be interested in watching. Again, watching, watching a speed run, um, especially if it's a game that you're intimately familiar with, is always, uh, is always fascinating, in, in a lot of different ways. So definitely check that out. Uh, let's see here, uh, coming up next. Sorry, I'm closing out, closing out windows. Uh, as I put in the docket, uh, shit ass people ruining fun things. So I'm not like in like keyed into what goes on on Twitch on a regular basis. Like even though I stream occasionally, like I'm not in that culture, I would say. Mm -hmm. So there was a emote in Twitch uh, from a gentleman uh that is from a street fighter player uh whose name is gutex 
uh, his real name is Ryan Gutierrez, uh, that is like him with his head turned to the side and his mouth like slack jawed. And it's a it's a emote uh, that's used by a lot of folks. It's called the Pog Champ emote. I don't know why. That's uh, called the Pog Champ emote, but it is. I, so, yeah, I, I, I know. I forget. Yeah. So like so like if you type in Pog Champ in in Twitch chat, that that pops up on the screen. Um. Well, Ryan Gutierrez during the insurrectionist assault on the United States Capitol last week uh, tweeted out support for the seditionists uh saying quote will there be civil unrest for the woman who was executed inside the capitol today or will the maga martyr die in vain uh and then saying he's basically sharing a video uh from infowars that bastion of so you, i mean come on yo. Uh, big brother twitter wouldn't let me post the url so if you don't think big tech censorship is real there you go uh so twitch decided uh that's not someone that we want uh associated with our channel so they took the pog champ emote down but what they've decided to do instead was every day now there's a new pog champ so like every day they're picking a different like well-known streamer that has a similar emote essentially and like that person will be pog champ for that day so if you type in pog champ you'll get that person's emote popping up of them making like a goofy face or something so i guess that's making i guess that's making lemons and a lemonade because people on twitch aren't going to stop fucking typing in pog champ into the chat right yeah so i guess that's i guess that's a good way as any to handle it yeah i think it's a good idea um uh, i mean i i'm not gonna I'm going to try not to speak about uh, stupid people doing stupid things and, uh, and, and, and then stupid things happen to them. And they're like, yeah, I'm not going to talk about people throwing spokes into their bikes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just, it's just not right now. But uh, I do think this is a good idea that, um, that uh, Twitch is doing. And um, yeah, sorry for, uh, Sorry for bringing politics into video games, uh, I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, this prominent video game, professional video game player is talking about politics, but but keep your politics out of my video games. Uh, funny, okay. funny how they keep finding their way in there. It's weird. Yeah. It's almost, yep. almost yep. like it's uh, unavoidable. Yep. 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 So. Um, but yeah, this is a cool idea uh, of the rotating pog champ. Um. I, 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 I approve Twitch. Maybe I'll start. St- <laughs> okay. What a, right. what a ridiculous thing. <laughs> I'm not going to start streaming. No, what, a, what a silly thing for you to no. say. I'll hop on someone else's stream. I'll hop you on. If you, if you are, if you are streaming something, I will hop on your stream and, uh, and uh, get you demonetized or whatever. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know how, how streaming works. I'm I'm not sponsored yet, so. <laughs> or, or or I'm not a partner. Sorry, Gary's a partner. I'm not a partner. So, uh, finally in the news, uh, Riot and Bungie are are teaming up uh, to take down cheat makers uh, for Valorant and Destiny Two, respectively. Uh, Gator cheats, among other. Uh, folks that work for that or well that, that whole people that work for this company called gator Jeeps, uh have been making cheats for their software uh and so they are going after them uh litigiously basically aimbots like the normal kind of stuff you'd see uh it's interesting um i think all it's going to mount in it is the is a cease and desist order and the cheat maker getting taken down i don't think you're going to see any actual money changing hands as you usually don't it's, it's this is usually just speaks off yeah I, i'm on pick. i'm on gator cheats right now and a big red banner says in compliance with a lawsuit filed by riot games and bungie gator cheats will be shut down indefinitely yeah and indefinitely in this case does literally mean forever so, <laughs> so that's gonna be happening. um i'm i'm not surprised to see this i'm actually kind of surprised that it took this long for companies to kind of pull their resources together on this stuff, especially companies that have the same skin in the game in a lot of senses. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of this going forward. 
uh, especially when it comes to combating things like aimbots and other cheats for first person shooters. Um, I mean, it would, it would, you'd think it would make sense for Activision to hop in on stuff like this as well, but I guess they feel like going their own way. But for a company that likes uh, having as much bonus money in their pocket as possible, you'd think splitting lawyer fees three ways would be uh, an optimal <laughs> an optimal strategy uh, for yeah. stuff like this. Well, now they don't have to. They, 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 they let other people do it. I and, guess. Uh, yeah, they took the mica approach and just let the people who actually want shit to change do it and then just <laughs> I reap all the rewards. <laughs> no they probably didn't do it just because um bungie was there you know you know how relationships are. oh yeah you don't like to run into your ex yeah i get yeah. it it's very awkward it's like oh oh yeah oh yeah so what are you doing oh we're, we're still making the same old games yeah. it's like yeah yeah we're still making destiny yeah. speaking speaking of destiny apparently that has been a bit of a fucking the new season has been a bit of a train wreck this week, and more more really? specific, more specifically as it pertains to uh, PvP. Oh, because so so the problem is PvP is they didn't really make any changes to and like like PvP was almost untouched with all the new shit that came along. They did, however, so like they literally added like no new maps or anything like that with the newest expansion that came out. They did take away. 13 maps from all of the planet destinations that are now in the vault that aren't in the game anymore so so they lost literally like i don't know how many i, I don't know what percentage of the pvp maps 13 is but it's at least like 30 it's at least a third if not like 40 percent of the maps in the game and apparently stasis the new uh the new element in the game is broke as fuck in pvp because hmm. i mean because the whole the whole point of stasis is you can literally freeze your opponents in place yeah, no nah, yo <laughs> <laughs> no <Nah>, man come <laughs> on yo. <laughs> and, and, and and also too so like you know how they used to have the pinnacle weapons right and they and they'd have one pinnacle for each for each like core activity essentially mm -hmm. now it's the same weapon and it's just a different weapon skin that you can get depending on which activity you earn it in. Like you just pick one of the ones to make your critical path for the weapon mm. and that's what you get. And it's one gun and that's it. Uh, I don't know. All right. Yeah. All right. Work, work, work in progress. Work in progress right now. So yeah, I'm sure though. I'm sure they'll figure it out, but uh, yeah, here's what you need to figure out. You need to I'd figure out. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Right. I was gonna uh, ask. I, I have, I have, I have played it since since the new patch came out, just for a couple hours, just to see what it looked like. It's great, but there's nothing drawing me back to it right now. So. You, uh, well, uh, the what are load times like? Oh, it's, it's like nothing. It's it's like super, especially if you're going to like a regular destination, not loading up into like a like with other people or anything like that. Like just go to the tower it takes like two seconds. <laughs> would it be <laughs> ridiculous? Would it be ridiculous of me to install that game? Mm -hmm. Go to the tower, be marveled at the fact that I can get to the tower in two seconds and then get to another planet in two seconds and then uninstall the game because that's all I really want to see. Yeah, play if you, if you do it, play a PvP match or two as well. Just because, just again, experiencing that with buttery smoothness is, yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah, I would love to, I would love to be able to die in 60 frames, <laughs> it would be wonderful. Go to uh, densepistols.com slash Amazon for all of your Amazon purchases. Uh, I think my wife had what, three boxes come in today because... Oh, we had four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah they got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, 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 in fairness, ours was like cat litter. And, oh, essentials. And, and like dust buster filters and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Essentials. Not That's a piece right. of wall art. No, not a, not a piece of wall art. <laughs> um when you go to densepixels.com slash amazon for all of your amazon purchases you help out the show it is the easiest way to help out the show i mean you're you're already going to amazon anyway make sure you go to densepixels.com slash amazon when you do it helps us by giving us a little bit of a kickback and uh jay gets to find out what everyone purchases he doesn't see what you buy or he doesn't see who buys it but he sees what you buy. 
So make sure you buy something weird like like a zombie dildo. They sell those at Amazon. They sell those at densepixels.com <laughs> slash Amazon. And he'll be like, what the, what the fuck? Yo, you, you got some weird listeners, dude. And be like, well, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, once again, the gaming industry has failed us in having a big meaty topic to talk about this week. So we're <laughs> going right to the post office. Uh, Anthony's back with the wrestling questions. Um, and then we're going to jump to Mal. Oh, my crap. We're going to jump to Malcolm's wrestling question after that. Uh, last week, Anthony asked us our favorite stable slash tag team. This week, who is your favorite intercontinental champion? Now, I I view this as not who's your favorite wrestler that held the belt, but who is your favorite like run with the intercontinental title is how I'm picturing this in my head. Okay. Um Oh, well, then that changes my answer. <laughs> well, 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 what was your original answer going to be? Uh, I, I, I am, I am, I don't remember much of his run, mm -hmm. but I do remember him making that belt feel big time. And it was Randy Savage. Of course. If you're going to um, pick one wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and at a very close second, it's Scott Hall. Okay. I'm a Scott Hall mark. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, that guy is, that guy is, that guy's awesome. Like I thought that guy was Cuban. Like that's, that's how, that's how I was into the gimmick. I was, you know, I, I was like, yo, this guy, he's, he sounds kind of weird, but he says he's from Cuba. It's like, all right. So it, for me, it's, it's, for me, it's tough because my favorite, one of my favorite periods of time it, it, it's probably the rock for me be quite honest because what well, because one of my favorite stretches in history as far as the intercontinental championship goes was that mid 97 to mid 98 run that we had where steve austin had the belt um of course got his neck fucking broken uh won the title back from owen hart at survivor series in 1997 and then he started the first of what would be many feuds with the rock but that feud with the rock was incredibly notable because even though it happened over the span of two months because then stone cold was moving on to the wwf championship at the time that's where you had stone cold throwing the intercontinental title off of a bridge that's where you had him giving d'lo d'lo brown the stone cold stunner on top of a pickup truck uh, <laughs> like just a whole bunch of fucking fun shit going on in that era then you go into the Ken or the Ken Shamrock, the rock uh, feud that took place, you know, from the Royal Rumble to WrestleMania, which were two actually really good matches, like arguably the two best matches that Ken Shamrock probably wrestled in all of his entire WWF career uh, with the rock being completely shitty uh, and, and Uber healing it up. Like I said, I'll, I'll never forget my favorite uh, moment of that Royal Rumble match is when he decks Shamrock with, some brass knucks while the referee is out and then shoves them in Ken Shamrock's trunks and <laughs> Ken Shamrock doesn't get beaten by that. He later makes the rock tap out to the ankle lock. And then the rock tells the referee, he's like, Oh, check his trunks, check his trunks. And the referee checks his trunks and pulls out the brass knuckles and disqualifies him. Like it's like, it's, <laughs> it's, fucking, it's fucking excellent. And then that culminated um, that summer in the ladder match between triple H and the rock for the intercontinental title. At SummerSlam, which was also an excellent match. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably my favorite stretch. So I'd have to say The Rock is probably my favorite Intercontinental Champion, even though he was really only involved uh, for the better part of a year with the Intercontinental title. Because that's, that's what the Intercontinental title used to be. It used to be a yeah, short-term slingshot to, to yeah. move it up to the big time. The, uh, the thing that you get, I remember Macho Man, I was looking at a bunch of Macho Man promos the other day, and Macho Man, he was, he was like, yeah, like, this is my ticket to the top. Yeah, I'm coming after you, Hogan. Like, like, cause that's what it was, right? It was the, it was the, like you said, it was the the belt that you got to 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 make sure it was the test belt to make yeah. sure it looks good on you. Um, but yeah, man, I I but they're like, I mean, you could literally name any wrestler, and they've probably been an Intercontinental Champion at one point. Any anyone of serious note for the yeah interview. yeah for sure. Anyone who's still like anyone who's still here, right? Like who's 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 a name. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, Randy Savage and Razor Ramon are, are 
Oh my gosh. I see someone post a, a Mr. Perfect. I like Mr. Perfect also, but, but uh, no, those are my two. Actually, no, you know what? I'm changing my answer to Rick Rude. <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick Rude was an excellent intercontinental champion and Rick Rude had the intercontinental championship belt airbrushed onto his, onto his uh, tights. While he was the champion, <laughs> and it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, when he didn't have when he didn't have another man's wife airbrushed onto That's his right. crotch. <laughs> <laughs> so Malcolm says, "Just wanted to say you guys are doing a great job, and these Trumpers are lucky TNP didn't release the Ace in the Wolf to square up with them." Uh, also, Brad, how did you leave the Heart Foundation or Demolition out of your stable rankings last week? So, by the time that I really started watching wrestling um, consistently. The obviously way past the old Heart Foundation at that point, and even the new Heart Foundation was kind of coming to its end because it was. I started watching very shortly before Bret Hart um, departed for for WCW, and I was never a Demolition guy because I never watched them naturally growing up because I wasn't watching wrestling when I was that young. Yeah, yeah, but, I, I I I was never a, gem- a Demolition guy either. Um. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cam says the Royal Rumble is fast approaching, and we could potentially be getting a Big E Rumble win, followed closely by his dream WrestleMania match against Goldberg. Big meaty men slapping meat, as Big E would say. Uh, who are your picks for the Rumble this year? Uh, not Big E. Not Big E. No, it's not his time yet. Um, I think they're still testing to see if that belt looks good on him to see if the uh yeah. is he still in the continental champion he's still in the continental champion. yeah they're, they're still testing to see you know if it looks good on him um honestly i this has been such a weird year man mm-hmm. like i i have no idea i i have no idea because there's no like there are no fans to kind of gauge to influence where i think WWE th- thinks it should go. Mm-hmm. So I this is a this is up in the air for me, man. I I mean, I, it and it's going to be a weird rumble. Like like I hope they get the the atmosphere correct. Yeah. I don't know men, men's rumble the, the the rumor is that Daniel Bryan's probably going to be the guy to face off against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, but they kind of cooled Daniel Bryan off on SmackDown this past week because he got beat clean by Shinsuke Nakamura in the gauntlet match that they had. Mm -hmm. Um, They actually heated up Nakamura, but I don't think he's going to be winning the Royal Rumble. No, he already won a Royal Rumble. And look what that did for him. It didn't do a whole lot. Um, Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. I don't know. Like I I, I like making off-the-wall predictions when it comes to the Royal Rumble. So I'm going to predict Brock Lesnar wins the Royal Rumble and has a rematch against Drew McIntyre uh, at WrestleMania. I have nothing to base that on other than my gut. Um, as far as the ladies... If going, Royal Rumble, sorry, If we're going off the wall, real yeah. quick, if we're going off the wall, fuck it. Jay Uso. That is an off-the-wall pick. <laughs> Jay Uso versus Roman Reigns. But not a ridiculous pick, given <laughs> the past several months, in all honesty. Um, women's Royal Rumble... It's really difficult not to just go Charlotte Flair because that seems it, it seems too obvious, especially because they got the belts on her and Oscar now, like you know, tease that dissension, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be cool to see like Bailey win and run that feud back again at WrestleMania on the big stage, but they've already it, it's already run its course. I don't know if you can run it back that quick. Um I'm going Bianca Belair, not for mm-hmm. just for the obvious, right? Um, you know, solidarity and all that. But um, um, I think that it was teased, what, last year or year before? Mm-hmm. Where she, uh, I don't know if she was the Iron Woman, but I remember she did very well. She had the most eliminations, I think. That's it. She had the yeah. most eliminations. Um, I think that you need to build someone, you need to make someone new because the, the, you know, it, it, the same four or five women up at the top, it, it, you know, it's not, you, you need something fresh, right? Um, I don't think Shayna Baszler is there. 
Otherwise, they wouldn't have partnered her with Nia Jax. Um, but I, I think Bianca Belair could do it. I think last year was a preview. Um, and I think that they would try it in this no crowd era mm -hmm. to kind of to kind of give her make sure she has the the shine that she needs to have through you know I, I, she's got fans but i don't know if wwe believes in her so they can really pump her up really get the the artificial crowd noise in to make it feel like a huge deal um yeah i think i think she'll be i think she'll be next uh, Anthony asks, how does an Indiana Jones game make room for itself in an Uncharted and Lara Croft world? Uh, quite easily. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. it's not like those games are coming out every year. Right yeah, this, I don't think there's an oversaturation of, you know, adventure treasure hunting games. Uh, if anything, it's got, the, it's got that branding. That'll give right. it a leg up. Uh, it's being made by a competent studio. Like, that's a good sign. And um, yeah, it'll it'll make its way the same way Uncharted made its way into, in made room for itself with everyone thinking, oh, this is just Dude Raider, right? Like I thought that, <laughs> I thought that was it's just Dude Raider, but uh, it ended up being one of my favorite uh, game series. So, um, yeah, they can they can do it. Yeah, uh, and I I suspect it'll feel very much like uh uncharted with you know even uncharted had like a like a mechanic that uh a swinging mechanic like he had like a like a whip or something like not a whip but he had like a grappling hook yeah there there, uh, there were just a lot of conveniently placed vines all around the area that yeah you just swing on so yeah uh that this that this uh super athlete nathan drake who up oh, but he stumbles and he he has a half tuck shirt so he's an everyman <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. That guy's a that guy's a that guy's a stone cold killer and an Olympic level athlete. Forget this everyman crap. Uh, Johnny says, question for the retired porn connoisseur: Which film star gave you the most post nut clarity slash depression? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what uh, I you know when you're when you're all right, this is, this is kind of gross, but when you're into it. Like when you're into it and it's just like, like oh, and then you, and then, you know, you, you finish and it's just like, oh, God damn. Like that was, that was really, it's, it's how, oh, I don't think you'll get this reference, but it's in Avengers Endgame, mm -hmm. there's Smart Hulk, right? Right. And Smart Hulk goes back in time to see Angry Hulk. And Angry Hulk is you getting the job done, right? Is you roughing up the suspect, right? And as Smart Hulk is the clarity that you get when you're done. It's like, well, oh, why was I acting like that? I mean, it was just, you know. Mm. And uh, which star does that? I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a star chaser. I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever whatever gets me there gets me there yeah they listed that they have recommendations at the bottom of the uh porn on page for a reason so just yeah. like cruise around so yeah like like wikipedia yeah. just click this <laughs> click like this let's see how far you go <laughs> uh amir amir has a question for each of us uh catered to our interests uh he asks me if i could have any watch which would you get and he asked you, Micah, what's one action figure or statue you would want to have for your collection? Um, there was a uh, there was a, a Doctor Doom statue from Sideshow that was huge. It was uh, it was like it was huge. I can't remember. Don't get me lying. I, I can't remember how big it was, but mm -hmm. it was it was huge. And it was Doctor Doom sitting on a uh, well. There's two. There was one of him sitting on a throne you know, bored because he's the smartest man in the world and and there's nothing else you can do. And then there's one where he is standing there looking all regal and badass with his hand outstretched like this. And it was thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah, I would want something like that. Uh, I don't know where I would put it, but uh, I would want something like that. Um, 
Um, but I, there's not there's not just one, uh, obviously, because uh, <laughs> once you start, you you can't really stop if you're me. Um, but this is an expensive hobby, and uh, and yeah, you got to stop eventually. But there's not there's not just one. So there. So I guess I have two. Um, one of which is possibly attainable in my lifetime, and the other of which is not fucking bloody likely unless, <laughs> unless I become <laughs> uber successful. Um, so if 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 I had the money and it was no object, the first watch that I would probably buy is I would probably buy a vintage uh, Rolex GMT Master II uh, from the 1970s. It's prob- probably the first thing that I would seek out. A vintage GMT Master II nowadays goes for probably between eight and nine grand, if not a little bit more expensive, um, especially if it's in good working order uh, that mm-hmm. doesn't need to be serviced. Uh, if money was no object at all and I could just buy something ridiculous, uh, I would get a... A Langenzange, uh, which is a German watch brand, uh, Datagraph is probably the watch that I would go buy um, and and just fucking go nuts. But that's a $70,000 watch. And I don't imagine that I'll be <laughs> that I'll be affording that watch anytime, anytime fucking soon. Because <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's a little... That's a little out of my price bracket. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say seventy thousand? I can get to use one for forty nine nine. Oh, <laughs> from, 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 from the bay. Pardon me uh, for uh, for missing on that one. You know, because when, when you, you save, save a couple bucks pre-owned, <laughs> I feel like I feel like you got to do it. Mike Mike is sending me the uh, the Doctor Doom picture. I will send him a picture of a Langa datagraph. Which would, like I said, that'd be my fuck you money watch if I was able to get one of those. Hey, open. Uh, open. <laughs> yeah, why isn't it? Oh, all right, all right, computer. I, I get it from. Oh, look at that. See? That does look nice. You should see the back of it, too. Like I said, they, the, the movement on those is, is insane. And they have, I think usually they have an open case back. So. Now, yeah. what do you call those watches that I see? This is going to be a, a really ignorant ass watch question. <laughs> what are those watches that the rappers wear that look like like they look like they look like cup saucers uh-huh. that have been bedazzled and have like like uh, 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 it, it's it's just just a diamond encrusted piece of crap. So in a lot of cases, um, a lot of rappers will either get, so a lot of rappers watches are special ordered. They're not, they're not stuff that's available to the general public. And they usually, the, the two most popular brands, uh, there's actually, there's actually a few, um, Hublot is probably the brand you're thinking of. Uh, Hublot makes a lot of really aggressive looking watches for people that are, you know, not confident about the size of their penis. Um, <laughs> uh, Richard Meal is another brand that makes a lot of really like ostentatious watches. Uh, Rolex has made a lot of special editions that are gross looking and jewel encrusted and and nasty as well. Uh, Paddock doesn't usually get into that too much. Um, they usually just kind of they they usually just kind of make their shit and and people just like it because the brand is desirable, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 probably either a Hublot or a Richard Meal that you're that you're thinking of. Uh, yeah, because kind of stuff. Yeah, my dad uh, used to be into watches. He, uh, we were like, oh, we're we'll get him a Rolex, and then this was years ago. We were like, oh, we'll get him a Rolex, and then we back, saw back, back when Rolexes Rolex. were actually reasonable. Yeah, and. Uh, and um yeah we see them now and uh, yeah Ro- rolex in the past 20 years especially has gone through a huge fucking like like the prices of rolex have doubled pretty much over the last 20 years and that and that's that exceeds the rate of inflation obviously and it's more of a scarcity thing they're 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 very much um a company that uh basically 
the, like like the the growth of the Chinese market has made demand far out exceeds supply mm-hmm. on Rolex watches. So now Rolexes are insane amounts of money, and Tudor watches, which is a sister brand uh, of Rolex, is now kind of like the affordable Rolex in many ways. <laughs> so, and plus, you can't even get a fucking Rolex to save your life. Like if you want a, a stainless steel sports watch, Rolex. Hope, I hope you have a good relationship with an authorized dealer because that's about the only way you're getting one unless you want to pay <laughs> unless you want to pay 25% over over list from Jesus. from a from a non-reputable website. So <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, finally Trey says, why hasn't noted Patriot Michael Bay made a Call of Duty movie yet? Uh I'm kind of surprised that Michael Bay hasn't made a war film, unless he has, and I'm just oversight um yes uh he has made um what was it the uh the, he made a benghazi movie didn't he oh did he i think oh, he that, made a benghazi movie surprise me. yeah you're right he made that 13 hours movie with john krasinski he also directed pearl harbor not technically a war movie yeah that's a um, that's close, a michael bay love story right close, close and close enough. <laughs> <laughs> um i mean if he made 13 hours I guess that's pretty much his Call of Duty movie right then and there. I mean, these these guys, like, you know, the Call of Duty guys, like, jacking off to famous, you know, military incursions anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would argue, like, every Michael Bay, damn near every Michael Bay is called, Michael Bay movie is a Call of Duty movie, just with a different spec, uh, different skin, right? Like, Transformers is Call of Duty in disguise, right like it's a bunch of it's a bunch of it's a bunch of soldiers fighting uh robots with the help of other robots it's true so there you go said the rock was his uh was his version of a james bond movie yeah yeah anyways (laughs) his uh his version of a sci-fi movie was uh uh what was the name of that damn movie i can't remember it um what is this filmography the island uh yeah the island that was his science fiction he he directed the island yes he did he directed the island yeah i actually kind of like the island huh i mean look i'm not gonna lie i like most michael bay movies i'm sorry i you know they're 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 trash some of them are trash but uh of the ones i've seen i've seen almost all of them uh, Bad Boys, The Rock, which is excellent. Um, losers whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. An excellent quote. J- J- I, for, I forgot that he was involved with that uh, with that Ninja Turtles reboot. Yeah, he was a producer. Yeah, was a producer. Which, came, which came out six, seven years ago almost to this point, which is insane to me. I didn't mind that. Trans- I didn't mind them Ninja Turtle movies either. Like they're Ninja Turtles, you know. Like uh, people got all butt hurt because the the turtles weren't, you know, the size of Dan Crenshaw. Like, like yo, they're <laughs> yo, they're they're mutant ninjas, yo. Like, who's to say <laughs> what what the size of a mutant Ninja Turtle is? You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, just because you want to, instead they looked like fucking Krogan. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And quite frankly, I would want a Ninja Turtle to look like a Krogan than, you know, <laughs> fucking Dan Crenshaw with a shell on his back. Not <laughs> here, <man>. <laughs> oh, if you don't know why that's funny. Pay five dollars to look forward this week. So thank you guys for all of your questions. Uh, densepixels.com slash fans is where you go uh, to answer the post ops question week. There was another uh, question there from Al, but it was about Sekro, and damned if we know the answer to that. Question. Yeah, sorry, Al. You gotta you gotta talk to uh, people who are actually good at uh, those type of. Games. I think I think I think Amir's coming in coming in for the save. Excellent. One, so, uh, of course, make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, youtubecom slash pixels. Follow us on Twitch. Uh, I'm Dense Pixels. Brad Terrence is Apparition Four Ten. Carrie is Sup. It's Carrie. And again, densepixels.com slash premium just five dollars a month and fifty dollars a year look most of you most of you got that stimmy money we know you do <laughs> slide 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 50 of them bones this way and help and help out a, a local business a small business 
Uh, before we leave, uh, I am going to be on a, a guest on a show, uh, a podcast. Um, they do a live show, and I'm going to be on uh, Sunday, uh, January 17th at 3.30 or 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll have more info, uh, information later. Uh, the show is called Truth, Lies, and Shenanigans. Uh, you can go to tlsshow.com um, and uh, you'll get information uh, there on when you can see the live episode. It's basically, um, they talk about, um, they don't talk about video games, but you know we don't just talk about video games either. They just talk about random hot topics uh, that that uh, are happening. Uh, so if you like what we do on some of our other shows, um, check it out. And, uh, and yeah, give me some support because they, they take, uh, they take uh, comments from people live uh, because they're a professional outfit. And we tried doing it live once and it's a whole lot of work. So <laughs> we, we, ain't, we ain't doing that, uh, you know, but. But yeah, I'll be on there. So that's my plug. Very cool. And uh, yeah, Lee said, show, represent the TNT Studios. So, yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd be fun. So, very good. And Mike will have more information on that in the family uh, as we get closer to that coming up this week. Uh, so that is it for us. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this thing. We will see you all. Let's okay. <laughs> see you. <ya. laughs> You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.